Today on our 2011 Volvo XC60, we'll be installing the Kurt trailer hitch receiver in a class three with a two inch opening on the receiver. Part number 13268. Here's what the hitch looks like installed on our vehicle. Now we'll go ahead and give you a couple measurements in helping you choose some accessories for your hitch, such as a ball mount, a bicycle rack, or a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper is approximately seven inches. From the top of the opening in the receiver to the ground is approximately 13 and a quarter inches. Now let's go ahead and install our hitch. We'll begin here by removing the rubber isolator from each side of the muffler. To do this, we'll use a little bit of spray lubricant and a large pry bar to work the rubber isolator off of the metal hanger. Once we've done this for both the driver and passenger side, next we'll need to remove the exhaust hanger itself. To do this, we'll simply back the center bolt out and set it aside for now. Next, we're going to need to mark out an area on the heat shield on each side that we'll need to take a pair of tin snips and trim out this area to allow the hitch to fit up into place. Now that we've got our heat shield trimmed out on both sides, next we're going to need to remove the tape that covers up the uppermost hole here at the back. It's along the inside of the frame rail on each side. To remove the tape, we'll simply use a flathead screwdriver and slide it up underneath the tape and peel it away. Now let's go ahead and point out the mounting locations that we'll be using. There's a total of three on each side. Now we will be fish wiring the hardware into each of these three locations. The hardware that we'll be using at this location is a 7 16 by an inch and a half long carriage bolt and an SP11 spacer. The SP11 spacer is the 0.25 by one inch by 2.5 inch square hole spacer block. And on the outside, we'll be putting a hex flange nut. So now we'll go ahead and take our coiled end of our fish wire and go through the mounting location coming out the access hole. We'll then feed the spacer block onto the end of the fish wire, followed by threading on the carriage bolt. We'll then pull the carriage bolt and spacer block back into place. We'll do this for both the driver and the passenger side. Now that we've got these two carriage bolts fish wired into place, it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you raise the hitch up into position. You will have to move the exhaust around a little bit to get the hitch to slide up into position as well as clear the rear fascia of the vehicle. Now that we have our hitch raised up into position, we'll go ahead and put it over the carriage bolt that's in the middle that we just installed. We'll then put the hex flange nut and loosely tighten it down on each side to hold the hitch into place. Now we're ready to move to the forward most mounting location. Before we can fish wire anything in though, we'll need to install our SP52 spacer, which is the large thick spacer that has the round hole in it. This will go in between the hitch and the vehicle's frame. We'll put this spacer block into place on both the driver and the passenger side. Now for the forward most location, we'll again use the fish wire, but this time we'll use a 7 16 by 2 inch long carriage bolt and a SP7 spacer, which is a smaller of the two square hole spacer blocks. We'll again take the coiled end of the fish wire going through the mounting location and coming out the access hole. Now we found when installing these two bolts, it's best to put the spacer block onto the fish wire then the carriage bolt threaded on, and as soon as you push the spacer block into the vehicle's frame, go ahead and start the carriage bolt, otherwise you're unable to pull the carriage bolt and spacer block down into place due to the length of the bolt. Now that you have the carriage bolt pulled into place, we'll go ahead and unthread the fish wire and put the hex flange nut on. We'll do this for both the driver and the passenger side. And finally, we just need to install the hardware for the two rearmost mounting locations that are up on the side of the frame rail. Now for the two rear mounting locations, We'll again be using a 7 16 by inch and a half long carriage bolt. We'll use one of the two remaining spacer blocks and we'll fish wire this into place. Again, taking the fish wire through the mounting hole and coming out the access hole where we'll then thread the spacer block on followed by the carriage bolt. We'll go ahead and pull the carriage bolt and spacer block into place. Now when unthreading the fish wire on these two locations, be very careful that the carriage bolt does not fall back into the vehicle's frame. These two mounting locations can be done, but it does take a little bit of patience and you will need to work a little slower here to make sure that you don't push the carriage bolt back into the frame. Once you have the carriage bolt and spacer block pulled into place, go ahead and put the hex flange nut on for each side. Now that we have all the hardware installed, we can go ahead and tighten everything down and then we'll torque it to the manufacturer's specification. For the two rear mounting locations, we did find that using an 11 16 ratchet wrench really helped out in tightening down these two hardware locations. Now that we have everything torqued down to the manufacturer's specification, we'll go ahead and put our two exhaust hangers back up. You'll feed it through the hitch, lining it up with the mounting hole, and putting the original hardware back into place. We'll do this for both the driver and the passenger side. 
Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and take a little more spray lubricant and put it on the rubber exhaust hanger to make it slide back onto the metal hook a little easier. Now we'll go ahead and put each of our rubber exhaust hangers back up. And with that, that'll conclude our installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 13268 on our 2011 Volvo XC60.